In this small lecture, I want to explain how the concept of stress can be applied in the concept of isostasy. Isostasy is a relative state of balance between crust that is floating on the mantle. This was the old definition. However, recently we have changed the terms crust will be replaced by lithosphere and mantle will be replaced by asthenosphere. We do so because lithosphere and asthenosphere are related to the mechanical properties of the rock layers whereas crust and mantle is a, are the properties of in terms of the chemical composition of the earth. So, I can write down the definition here. The recent definition will be it is the relative state of balance of lithospheric blocks also can be called as plates floating on asthenosphere. To start with the simple numerical form, we have to recollect Archimedes principle. And as per Archimedes principle, imagine there is a solid floating in a fluid. This can be wood floating in water or ice floating in water. So, imagine that this amount of length of the solid is capital H L. And this solid has a density of rho L. And here is the fluid, say it has a density of rho A. Now imagine that this solid is in a stable condition, it is neither sinking nor moving upward. In that case, what we can do numerically is we can find out this depth here as small h a. Now, we started talking with a solid floating in a fluid. Think of this solid is a lithospheric block or a plate. Since lithosphere with L, I use the subscript L over here and asthenosphere it is floating on asthenosphere, on asthenosphere A for asthenosphere, rho A and H A. Now, this yellow line can be called as the level of compensation. What does this mean? It means that at that level of depth, the pressure exerted by the asthenospheric column over here equals to the pressure exerted by the lithospheric block. I will repeat this part. What does this mean? This means that the pressure exerted by the asthenospheric material over here and over here equals to the pressure exerted by the lithospheric block at the base. So, here the pressure exerted by the lithosphere is equal to H L multiplied by rho L multiplied by G. I repeat H L is this length, rho L is the density of the lithosphere, G is the acceleration due to gravity. Now here what about the asthenosphere? The pressure exerted by the asthenosphere will be given by H A, H A is this length, this is the depth multiplied by rho A, A is the subscript for asthenosphere, rho A is the density of this asthenospheric material multiplied by G, G is the acceleration due to gravity. So, since it is in equilibrium situation, we can write P L equal to P A. In this condition, 
the block neither sinks nor moves up. It is isostatically stable condition. So, from here and these two equations we can write H L multiplied by rho L multiplied by G is equal to small h a multiplied by rho a multiplied by g. Naturally, g cancels out and we get an expression of stable condition of the crustal sorry the lithospheric block which neither sinks nor moves upward. Now, in certain textbooks you can find an another alternation and another way of writing this expression. Imagine this height is h star. So, we can see from this diagram h l is equal to h star plus h a. Now, this can be replaced over here h l can be replaced. So, if I do so it will appear like this h star plus h a multiplied by rho l is equal to h a multiplied by rho a. So, just another form of the same equation by introducing a an h star h star term. Now, from here you can find you can write in this way h a is equal to something which is possible to do by doing algebra. So, this is the starting point of looking at isostasy in terms of stress issues where the stress issue is involved when we said it is a pressure P L and P A there is another term for pressure that is stress the stress exerted by this column this cuboid on this surface. So, they can be I can write also as sigma L this I can also write as sigma A and so on so forth. Now, what if this block is under erosion that means the equation that I wrote and now I erased will no more be working properly. Erosional agent might be eroding this capital H L height with time. So, then the equation will need some modification or imagine here deposition of sediment is happening. In that case effectively the capital H L value is increasing with time. In that case also the equation that I wrote and now I erased has to be modified. Now, we will see how the isostatic concept and the stress issue can be applied for a rift basin. What happens in a rift basin? A depression can be produced on the earth surface because of extension and thinning of the lithospheric layer. So, imagine this is a lithospheric layer and due to tectonic extension horizontally it can attain such a geometry. This is idealization. In reality, the rifted basin might look differently in a cross section. So, imagine from here after extension such is the situation. So, we can see here a depression is created and sediment might come and get deposited. Imagine this rift basin is neither sinking nor moving upward. In that case, how do we apply the isostatic equation involving the concept of stress? Imagine this total height is capital H and this is by the way a place where the asthenospheric material is there. Say this lithospheric material has a density of rho L and this asthenospheric material has a density of rho A. So, here we have to find out where is the level of compensation or depth of compensation. I can draw it over here. Now, in order that the basin neither sinks nor moves up the amount of pressure exerted by the lithospheric column here has to be same as the pressure exerted by this portion. So, how much is the pressure exerted here? It is given by pressure exerted by this lithospheric block is equal to capital H multiplied by rho L multiplied by G. G is the acceleration due to gravity. Now, what about this portion? Here 
This place is filled with asthenospheric materials. Imagine this height is small h1. Okay. Imagine this height is small h2. So therefore, this height is given by capital H minus small h1 minus small h2. So now, to find out the total pressure exerted by this block, we can do that by adding the pressure exerted by this block, this block and this block. How much is the pressure exerted by this block? This one. This will be given by H1 multiplied by the asthenospheric material is here. So, it has a density rho A, rho A multiplied by G. This is the amount of pressure or stress exerted by the fluid over here on this surface. Plus, how much is the pressure exerted or the stress exerted by this solid material? It is equal to H2 into rho L. Rho L is the density of the lithosphere which is continuing here multiplied by acceleration due to gravity. And now this block at the top. Imagine it is full of a sediment of, of density rho s, s subscript indicate sediment. So here how much is this height? We have already seen h minus h1 minus h2 multiplied by g multiplied by the density rho s. So, what is this term? This is the term that indicates the pressure exerted by sediments that got deposited over here. So, by adding the, the stress created by this material on this line plus the pressure or stress created so much amount coming from this lithospheric material plus from the sediment this much of stress which is coming this is the total amount of stress that is working on this surface and in my two dimensional diagram this is a line on this line this is the amount of stress. In order that the rift basin neither sinks nor moves up I can call it as P, P L has to be equal to P and that indicates the rift basin is in stable condition and I just write what does what is the meaning of this stable condition that stable condition means the basin neither moves up nor collapses at depth. This is the meaning. So, this is a very simplified presentation for an isostatic equilibrium of a rift basin. You can ask a question what if there is no sediment coming over here. That means, if you are asking about a starved basin, a starved basin means what? There is a basin where there is no sedimentation has happened. In that case, what do we do? We simply avoid this term. If starved basin avoid this term. Why? Because since there is no sediment, so therefore no pressure will be exerted by the sediments in this column. Now sometimes students ask what about the atmospheric pressure? Well, we can also add that. Suppose I am thinking about there is an atmospheric pressure P star, then that is also acting on this layer, on this material as P star. So if that is the case, then here what is the major change that happens? It is P L plus P star equal to P plus P star. But as you see effectively, 
the atmospheric pressure will cancel out leading to this equation. What if the reef basin is sinking? If the reef basin is sinking, that means suppose this portion, this block is sinking even if little bit, then that would mean that a sinking basin will mean P is more than P L. And if that happens, by the way, the geometry of the basin which I started like this will get disturbed of course. And once it gets disturbed, then the equation no more will be valid. What if the basin is undergoing, this basin is undergoing an upward pressure. If that is the case, then that means P L is more than P. In this equation, one simplification can be done. We can clearly see in case of P L equal to P, we can write this P L is equal to H rho L multiplied by G is equal to this entire term H1 rho A G plus H2 rho L G plus H minus H1 minus H2 multiplied by G into rho S. Naturally, G can be cancelled out. Okay. Now, in certain research papers or in plate tectonics book, you may find little bit varying uh, equations. How it can be? Suppose instead of H minus H1 minus H2, I write is as height H3. So, naturally, in that case, these things remain the same and then plus H3 multiplied by G multiplied by rho S will happen. So, in the context of stress, we have seen and in the context of isostasy, a block which is floating in a fluid and the simple isostatic equation. Then we have seen a reef basin and how the equation alters. Now, we are going to see a compressive terrain, how a crustal block or a lithospheric block will be isostatically balanced. We start with a layer, let us say lithospheric layer and it is in a compressional tectonic regime. By compression, this layer can produce a hill or let us call a mountain like this. And as you see, this is a great idealization. In reality, mountain formation can be guided by plate tectonics and in that case, this isostatic concept may not work. Isostasy is a bit old concept. We have revised the, our view how the earth surface has deformed. We are bringing the plate tectonics theory. Nevertheless, isostatic theory still is used in bits and pieces here and there. For example, the Phenoscandian shield which is at present moving upward because the ice sheet that was deposited long back they has melted. There in that place the concept of isostasy still works. So, here we look at an idealized situation. I repeat it is an idealized situation where there is a layer and you compress and a hill is produced. We start with a lithospheric layer with density rho L. So, here, 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 here and here it is all of same density rho L. Now, this portion we can call as the mountain. And this portion we can call the root of the mountain. Just like teeth have got roots, similarly mountains have got roots and this was studied more than 50 years back that mountains do have roots. Now consider this is height h2, this is height h1 and this is height h3. So, we can see the total height including the root this portion this column has a total height of 
h equal to small h1 plus small h2 plus small h3. Okay. Now, this is basically floating in asthenosphere which has a density of rho a small a subscript indicates that for the asthenosphere. Now, where is the level of depth of compensation here? Say it is here, it is here. How much is the pressure exerted by this yellow column on this yellow line? The answer is h multiplied by rho l multiplied by g. This is the pressure exerted by the lithospheric column on this surface. And how much is the pressure exerted by the asthenospheric material over here, this much? These arrows are indicating pressure that are exerted. How much is that? We find this is H3 height. So, this is H3 multiplied by rho asthenosphere multiplied by G and we write is as P A. Capital A stands for asthenospheric issue. So, it is the pressure or the stress exerted by the asthenosphere. I can also write it as sigma A. This one I can also write as sigma L. Now, if the mountain is neither sinking nor moving up, these two have to be equal. So, in that case, so I write like this. In case of stable condition, P L equal to P A. So, from here I can write capital H rho L multiplied by G is equal to H 3 into rho A multiplied by G. And we see that the acceleration due to gravity can be cancelled out. So, this can be one of the forms that you can see in older books or older research papers, but you can also find another form. For example, in some book or paper you may find this capital H is expanded in this manner. And if I do so, then I can write okay. and here from here I can write H 3 equal to some expression. So, this can be another form of writing. In case this column is sinking, then the total pressure exerted by the column will be more than the pressure exerted here. That is the case when P L is more than P A, this block might sink and if it sinks, the geometry will be disturbed and if the geometry is disturbed, then the equation further will not be valid. On the other hand, think of that this mountain is moving upward. That would mean the pressure exerted by the asthenosphere P A exceeds P L. So, in the context of isostasy and stress, what have we covered so far? A block floating in fluid, the simplest case. Second, a rift basin produced by extension and there may be sediments coming in this basin or it can be a starved basin and how it is isostatically getting balanced, the relevant equation. And the final one here that in a compressive regime, the lithospheric block got compressed and a mountain is produced and this mountain is neither sinking nor moving up and how the equation of isostasy will look like. Okay, so, we have seen the basics of isostasy and let me add a few more things which will be useful in detail modeling. Recollect that we were dealing with a lithospheric block floating in the asthenosphere and we wrote such an equation when the lithospheric block is neither sinking nor moving up. Now, what if the lithospheric block is layered and this is very common in structural geology and tectonics. We may find layered rocks. So, in that case we can work in this manner. Think that there is a cuboid and layer 1 has a density rho 1 and has a height h 1, layer 2 has a density rho 2 and a height h 2. Similarly, for the n number of nth layer the density is rho n and this height is h n. Consider that this dimension, this length is a unit, this length is b unit and this total length is capital H. So, from the diagram we can say that 
capital H is a sum of all these heights that is what I wrote here. Now let us look at volume of the ith layer present within this block. The volume will be given by A multiplied by B and its height Hi. So the mass of that ith layer will be ABHI multiplied by the density rho i. Rho i is the density of the ith layer. So the mass of n such layers will be given by m1 equal to sum of all such layers from i equal to 1 to n. So this is the expression. Now we can also calculate the mass by another means. This total mass m1 can be given by a multiplied by b the base area multiplied by the height h. So therefore which is equal to sigma h i i equal to 1 to n and multiplied by the effective density rho e. Here e subscript stands for the effective density of the entire block. So these two m1 can be equated and that is what I do here and after doing a b basically cancels out and finally the representative density of this block is obtained as sigma h i rho i divided by sigma h i. We can write sigma h i also as capital H if we want. So if this calculation is being done we can now look back into the case of isostatic balance. Suppose there are several layers here then this rho l term would be replaced by rho e the effective density. Similarly, if you find that asthenospheric layer has got several sub layers in that case also we can replace this by a representative density rho e dash. How do we deal with isostasy involving stress issues when there are porous rocks involved? In that case we need some background work and let us initiate that one. So here I am doing a subtopic so that we get ready for the next detail density of a porous rock which is partially saturated with different fluids. We will understand it and slowly we will get into the problem. So I just wrote down in the pore space fluids F1, F2 etc. up to Fn occupy volumes V1, V2 etc. and there are fluids of densities rho 1, rho 2 and rho n etc. So for volume V1 which where there is a fluid F1 the density is rho 1. Now the volume of all the fluids will be given by sum of all the volumes which I wrote here and imagine that there is some vacant pore space V0 because I am dealing with partially saturated rock material. So therefore V0 is also the vacant pore space. And note that we are dealing with fluids which I wrote here they are immiscible fluids they do not mix up. Now imagine that the volume of the solid matrix is Vs. Here note the term matrix. Here the word matrix is not exactly the same what we use in sedimentology. In sedimentology matrix, cement etc. are the different terms having different meanings, grains. Here the matrix will mean the solid portion of the rock including the grain, the matrix, the cement. So here that solid matrix of volume Vs is considered. Now consider that this matrix has a density equal to rho m. Now the total volume of the rock that we are dealing if we follow this sigma Vi that means the sum of volume of all the fluids and then the empty pore space and the volume of the solid material given by Vs. So the effective density rho e, e stands for effective density will be the total mass divided by the total volume of the partially saturated rock. Now here the total mass can be written as the mass of the fluid and the mass of the solid and the total volume in the denominator is written just like that. Now recollect that the word porosity phi as a fraction when we represent is the total pore volume divided by the total volume of consideration. So here as per these symbols I can write total pore volume is equal to sum of all the fluid volumes and the vacant volume V0 their sum is the total pore volume and what is the total rock volume that we are considering along with these terms I add up the volume of the solid material. So therefore from here I can write 1 minus phi is equal to Vs divided by sigma Vi plus V0 plus Vs. This will be useful soon. Now let us have a look here. So here is our equation 2 
and that is our equation 1. From 1 and 2 I can write the effective density in this manner. You can follow the algebra from here and for a single fluid F1. So, instead of now thinking that there are so many fluids just think of a one single fluid and that is completely saturating the pore space. Completely saturating means what? That V0 the empty space in the rock becomes 0 and then therefore, phi becomes V1 divided by V1 plus Vs. From where it is coming? From here it is coming. Now, using this further we can write the effective density in this manner which simplifies to this and then finally to this form rho m minus rho m minus rho 1 multiplied by phi. If I take this equation and write over here and in some books we change rho 1 by rho f then this is a standard form that the effective density is equal to rho m minus rho m minus rho f multiplied by phi. So, here we deal with one single fluid and that is completely saturating the rock medium. So, now remember this equation we are going to use it very soon in case of isostasy and that will involve stress issues. But also remember if we are dealing with partially saturated porous material then such an expression of the effective density might be useful.